HKM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. This past weekend was the Hopkinton 300th Anniversary Celebration Weekend. Before we show you the many festivities that occurred, you might have noticed a beautiful restored fountain at the town common. Sculptor of the project, Jeff Boccaccio, took HCAM News through the process of restoring the Charles Claflin Fountain. First off, can you talk about the process of uh, putting together this fountain and getting it ready for installation? Sure. So um, the first thing we did was we looked at historical uh, reference, seeing that half the fountain was actually missing. So we looked at the uh, historic uh, photos, uh, we took measurements, and recreated the missing components. Uh, once the missing components were sculpted and approved by the committee, those components then went to the foundry where they were sand casted, um, tap and dyed, dry fitted together to make sure that everything once we got it on site went together properly. Um, so as you can see now what we're doing is we're, we've got the bottom basin in and we're now starting the, the first, te the first um, center posts. Uh, we've got that section to go in next. Once that section goes in, then the first basin off the ground will go in and then so on and so forth until we're at the top. All right. Now, how long uh, did it take to get this all together time-wise? Months, months? Weeks? Months and months. Um, so I, I think we pulled it apart in March of, of last year. Uh, no, of this year, I'm sorry. So we've been, we've been working hard since then on it and so um, there's the obvious unknown things that occur when you do a historic project like this. A lot of the components that we thought we could use, some of the internals, uh, were so badly rotted and corroded and compromised that we had to actually replace them. So um, we ended up replacing all that stuff. Could you talk about your career a little bit, doing uh, sculptures like this? Is this uh, your you know, your first historical type of sculpture, or have you done things like this before? Yeah, we, we, we do a lot of historic uh, conservation and restoration work, uh, be it a fountain, um, a memorial, stone, bronze. We do a lot of uh, bronze restoration work. We just completed the 25-foot uh, tall General Ambrose Burnside Monument in Providence, Rhode Island, in the Birdside uh, Plaza. Uh, we do a lot of commission sculpture work from scratch. In other words, a client will come to us and want something like this made, made new, brand new. So we do that. And um, private commission as well. You know, it might be a portrait of someone, uh, a, a marker. Right now we're, we're working with the town of Natick. There were two gentlemen that were on the DPW that passed. And so we're doing memorial markers for them portrait of their face and then a uh, some verbiage down below it and uh, we're also uh, one of the other projects we have is a Vietnam Memorial for uh, the Metro West Transit Authority approximately 15 foot tall Vietnam soldier holding an M16 looking like he just kind of came out of the a skirmish in the in the jungle uh, so. so you do a little bit of everything yeah yeah <laughs> yeah is this your uh, is this the biggest fountain you've done, or have you done bigger fountains than this before? This is actually the tallest fountain, yeah. So. All right. Um, now, talk about the process so far. Uh, it looks like, uh, at least from what I've seen, that the base took the longest to get in. Is that the case? The rest of the pieces are a little bit, uh, take a little bit less time? Yeah, less complicated. So that base, it was critical that that was watertight. And you can see, you probably saw yesterday, we've got seven holes in the bottom of that basin, all that have plumbing that have to line up to it, that go to this state-of-the-art plumbing house that we, we've um, 
had constructed. So bringing that basin up, getting it all uh, bolted together and have all the um, all of the uh, the caulking, if you will, in place, and then lowered down on top of that is there's a lot of things that need to all line up perfectly in order for that base to come down, seat properly, and be watertight. The other components now, as you can see, Kevin over there, he's he's putting a riser in. Now this piece will go down on top of it. There'll be an L bracket that'll come out the side, and then we'll shoot up to the next basin, and then. It, Finally, we'll go all the way up to the top for the the baller that's on the top of it. So, um, yeah, this the rest of it should go pretty quick today. Friday, September 11th, kicked off the Hopkinton 300th anniversary celebration weekend. That night, the festivities began with the revealing of the restored Claflin Fountain and a rededication of the town gazebo during the opening ceremonies. On Friday, September 11th, Hopkinton's 300th anniversary celebration weekend began with a moment of silence, which was held to recognize the victims of the terrorist attacks just 14 years ago. Today's uh, obviously become a somber day in this nation's history. Uh, we experienced, I think all of us, what will hopefully be the most catastrophic national event of our lifetimes that day. Um, but it's important to realize that, uh, that as terrible as that was, and, and the, despite the fact that we do we need to remember all these people, the simple fact is life does go on, and it's not disrespectful at all to celebrate t tremendous events or to show joy on this day. Uh, in fact, in some ways, it's probably one of the best ways we can remember those people. Um, as, we, uh, as we think about what we're here to do tonight, um, we should remember that the fountain that we're going to turn on here again in a few minutes has uh, only been in place for a small fraction of the town's history, uh, yet it has seen two world wars, a pandemic, and the Great Depression. But importantly, it's also seen man walk on the moon, uh, the end of the polio and smallpox uh, viruses, and uh, it's seen a small country that was on the periphery of Europe turn into the greatest power that the world has ever seen. So uh, certainly what we learn, I think, is that there can be, there can be tremendously positive events and, um, and despite the challenges that we may all face, there are uh, uh, many great things that come about here and, and we need to focus on those on nights like this. Tonight is to, uh, to welcome you all here in that vein, focusing on the positive. Um, we are here to celebrate our history and, and what we've become, despite the challenges we faced along the way. Our town actually existed for half a century before there even was United States. And we should be thrilled at how far we've come in that time. So with that, it is my great privilege to welcome you to the start of our fantastic 300th anniversary birthday weekend. The way it will work this tonight is that uh, we actually have put in place a time capsule, you may not know this already, up in the gazebo. Uh, underneath a, a newly laid foundation stone, we have, um, we have a capsule that will be opened in the next 100 year anniversary, and we'll cut the ribbon on the, on the gazebo here in a few minutes to officially dedicate that. And one, two, three. There we go. All right. Yay, hey, it's open. Former Hopkinton Board of Selectmen Chair Eric Sonnet reintroduced the misplaced plaque honoring Ernie Fecto, the main fundraiser behind the original gazebo. In 1995, the Board of Selectmen presented Ernie with what amounted to a Lifetime Achievement Award. And it was a plaque that essentially said, thank you, thank you, thank you, we want to always remember it. Well, we remembered it until we knocked on the old gazebo to build this one, and the plaque got misplaced. So what we've done is we've recast it. We were even smart enough to make two of them in case something happens to this one. And we've put it back on the wall as a tribute to Ernie. Let me tell you something, Ernie Fecto, was the best of us, and it's only fitting that we dedicate, rededicate this to him. <laughs> Ernie was born during World War I, served in World War II, and lived through the first Gulf War. He had seen it all, and this veteran's gazebo is a tribute to not only the veterans, but the guy that made it happen. 
Chairman of the Fountain Subcommittee, Len Holden, then told the history of the Claflin Fountain that was erected in the memory of Charles Winslow Claflin and Maria Claflin by their son, Charles L. Claflin, in 1907. One of Hockenden's most esteemed residents, he had financial interest in large coal yards ranging from Albany, New York to Boston. He was the eastern agent of the Delaware and Hudson Coal Company and president of the Massachusetts Wharf Coal Company in Boston. Locally, he was president of the Hopkinton National Bank, a trustee of the Hopkinton Savings Bank, president of the local Board of Trade, and a director of the Quinsigamon National Bank. He also served on the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen. He was born in Hopkinton, March 10, 1851. He was an only son, never married. He died at a young age of 54 in September of 1905. To, to the town of Hopkinton in his will, he left two $1,000 trusts and one $1,000 bequest. One trust was to the upkeep of the Valentine Tomb Cemeteries on the south side of East Main Street, just down the street. The other trust was for the care of the grounds of the Hockington Common. The bequest, also for $1,000, was, was to be used for the erection of a fountain that would be de dedicated to memory of his parents. Everybody, join me in singing to our town. Happy birthday. Coming up next on HCAM News, we will show you many more festivities from the Hopkinton 300th Anniversary Celebration Weekend, and Courtney will let you know everything coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. A lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and healthcare services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. We are the girls from Girl Scout Troop 72969 from Hopkington. We would like to thank Mr. Trojan for the awesome tour of the H Camp Studio. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend one, to learn a Girl Scout Troop. And two, visiting H Camp to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Kalala Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout Troop tour. And for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth. Welcome back to HCAM News. Saturday, September 12th, was the second big day of the 300th anniversary celebration weekend. Light Up the Night took place in the back lot of the middle school and high school. Thousands gathered for entertainment, a variety of food trucks, and a fireworks show that will not soon be forgotten. Many gathered outside the middle school and high school for Light Up the Night. During the 300th anniversary celebration weekend, the night featured food trucks, live bands, games for the kids, Hopkinton trivia. Question, where is he from? Who is the town of Hopkinton, Hopkinton named after? Just come on up here and yell at my face. Edward Hopkins is right! As well as the photo project in which people wrote personal messages or Hopkinton related messages on their body to be compiled into a 300 image and donated to the town for display for all community members to enjoy. It's really starting to fill in at this point in the night here. In back of you, you've got 500 people waiting in line for food at the food court and we got another, another probably a couple thousand done, now down the football field. Uh, the band's been great. Everyone seems to be having a real good time. Uh, we've, had, uh, we've had all kinds of, of fun events so far today, and it's only going to get better here in another 90 minutes when we get the fireworks started after the Metro West Symphony Orchestra. Um, but you're right. I mean, this has been four hours of great fun. 
backed up by five years of hard work to get here. And what's amazing about this, and I think most people don't know, is that there's been two groups now working on this uh, almost for five years. We started a 300th committee uh, run by Jean Birchman about three, four years ago now, actually, and she's been working on this since before that. And then there's also a group called the Friends of the 300, that's a private net group that came together almost five years ago, and they are the ones who put together the parade for tomorrow. So this weekend is the culmination of thousands of hours of work, right? hundreds of hours of volunteers just to get here. Um, and now we've, we've still got hundreds of people walking around in orange shirts who are helping everything run efficiently, who are taking pictures in the photo booth downstairs, who are helping the bands get set up, um, just walking around and sort of helping people with things. So this is just a phenomenal community-wide event uh, that has really been the product of literally hundreds if not thousands of people to get to this point. And couldn't be prouder. What a great way to celebrate our 300th birthday. You know, it's a wonderful night out to celebrate with community and it's really important to do that. Um, 300 years is such a long time and when you think about what's happened in the last 300 years, the amount of change, the amount of change not only here in this community but in our country and the role that residents right here in Hopkinton have played in that is, is something certainly worth celebrating. The night ended with the Metro West Symphony Orchestra followed by an unbelievable firework display. look at the tremendous firework finale that topped off a night that will not soon be forgotten in Hopkinton. The following morning, it was time for the parade. The Hopkinton 300th Anniversary Celebration Parade featured hundreds of attractions from throughout the country. Here is a look at some of the sights and sounds from a very fun-filled afternoon in Hillertown.
You can expect to see the parade in its entirety airing soon on HCAM. For everything else you can expect on the HCAM channels, we turn to our promotions coordinator, Courtney, with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, September 18th at 8 p.m., the Hopkinton Coffee Break hosts discuss the 300th anniversary weekend and how their Facebook page has grown. Now my kids are in their 20s, so they initially, I mean, they like growing up here, but their eyes are rolling, they're a little too grown, too, you know, in the big city now and so forth. They are still talking about what a wonderful time they had. On Saturday, September 19th at 1.30 p.m., it's boys soccer versus Westwood. On Tuesday, September 22nd at 6.45 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. The meeting will also air on our live stream at hcam.tv slash live. On Wednesday, September 23rd at 11 a.m., the Hopkinton Drug Lecture Series kicks off by discussing chronic inflammation, treatments, and new insights. On a new All About Hopkinton at 8 p.m., David Youngberg recalls his experiences as an educator and the challenges students face today. In all my decision-making as a teacher and also as an administrator, when it comes to making difficult decisions, I always think along the lines of what's most important for children. On Thursday, September 24th at 7 p.m., the school committee meeting will air live on HCAM-TV. 
Do you want to stay up to date with the latest HCAM happenings? The HCAM Insider is a great way to do that. Just head over to hcam.tv slash news updates. You can also sign up for our daily news updates to keep up with everything Hopkinton. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. I want to congratulate the 300th Anniversary Celebration Committee and all who are involved in hosting an absolutely fun and remarkable celebration weekend. You certainly helped create many great memories that will not soon be forgotten. You can find hundreds of pictures of the 300th Anniversary Celebration Weekend at seeninhopkinton.org and many videos of all the tremendous events that took place on our website, hcam.tv. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and happy 300th birthday, Hopkinton. Yeah.